Hello, thank you for joining me for this ArangoDB 3.5 feature introduction video. Today, we'll be looking at a highly requested feature that is being introduced in version 3.5, Time to Live Indexes. Time to Live Indexes offer a built-in solution for automatically removing documents based on time of creation. Having a collection with documents that will be automatically removed can be useful in multiple situations, such as session management or dealing with log data. With Time to Live Indexes in ArangoDB, you create an index on an attribute that is either a timestamp or a date string, and then also define the amount of time before the associated document should be considered expired. Once a document is marked as expired, it will eventually be removed. The thread that checks if a document needs to be removed happens on a cycle, by default about every 30 seconds, but this time is not guaranteed and will vary depending on the database environment. Time to live indexes should not be used for precision or consistency. Instead, this feature is primarily for convenience. Let's move on to taking a look at creating an index and seeing the index in action. I will be using the web view to create and showcase the TTL index. Remember, this feature is new to 3.5, so if you're on an earlier version, you may not have the same options I do. To start out, we need to create a collection and insert some test documents. I will use the example of a common use case for TTL indexes, session management. I'll create a collection and name it sessions. While we are here, let's go ahead and create an index. You can create the TTL index in the same place you normally create indexes in the web view. And the process for creating in the shell is the same as well. The type of index must be TTL, and then we need to supply an attribute. TTL indexes can only have one attribute that will be evaluated. Next, you can give it a name if you like. Otherwise, one will be automatically generated. Here's where we will supply the number of seconds before a document should be considered expired. The field we supplied will occasionally be checked, and if the timestamp or date string is older than itself, plus 30 seconds, or whatever time you supply, it will be considered expired and eventually removed from the collection. As I mentioned, the thread checks this on a cycle, so even though I supplied 30 seconds here, it may not get around to deleting it until closer to a minute or longer, depending on the resources available. But it will eventually remove the document. We won't need to index this in the background, so we can leave that unchecked. Next, we need to add some documents, and I will use an AQL statement to insert a couple documents. This statement will insert a document with a key value of session, plus a number that I will increment as we add documents. The next attribute is our TTL index attribute, which is created at. The date underscore now function is the current timestamp in milliseconds. However, the TTL index operates off of seconds, so we need to convert this to seconds by dividing by 1000. Let's go ahead and insert this document and check that it shows up how we expect. Excellent. It inserted our document with our two fields. I'm going to go ahead and add one more document without the created at attribute. Now doing a query for all the documents in our newly created session shows the two documents that have been inserted. I'm going to keep running this query, and eventually we sh should see that the one document with the created at attribute drops off. I will speed this part up so that we don't have to wait the full 30 seconds. There we go. Now we only have the one document that doesn't have the indexed attribute, and the other document was removed by the TTL index. I would like to show one more example of a document that uses a date string and a TTL index that treats the document as expired once the specified time and date occur. This is just an alternative way for managing if a document would get deleted or not. First, 
before inserting any more documents, let's go ahead and drop and add the TTL index that looks for this new attribute. Let's call it expire at, because we want our document to expire on the specified date and time. We supply zero here, which means the document will expire after the time supplied in the expire at field. Now that our index is created, we can go back to our query and insert a document with an expire at attribute. One method of generating a date string with AQL is by using the date underscore ISO 8601 function. Inserting a document with a date string would work, but it would also be deleted as soon as possible during the next TTL index cycle. Instead, we will use another date function, the date add function. The date add function takes in a date or a timestamp, and then we supply the amount of time we would like to add to it, and then the unit of time supplied as a string for the third argument. For the purposes of this example, I'm only going to add 60 seconds. I'm also going to add an inserted at attribute with the current ISO time string, unmodified just for a visual reference. With this inserted, I will be able to add another session so that we can see one session drop at a time. I wait about 20 seconds here before adding in the next document, but I'll skip past that in the video so that you don't have to wait on that. Okay, now we have two documents inserted. To see these, I will simply return each document from our sessions collection. This return statement will show us the session, the current time, the expiration time for each document, and lastly, we can see the insertion time. If I keep executing this, the current time will update, and eventually it will pass our expiration time. The document sometimes will not be immediately deleted because the thread cycle hasn't checked yet, but eventually they will start to be removed. There goes our first one. Again, I'll speed up this part so that we don't have to wait the full amount of time. And there goes the second one. An additional consideration is, depending on the amount of documents that need to be deleted at a time, you could run into surprise spikes of resource utilization when a thread starts deleting the documents. ArangoDB allows you to fine tune these removal operations by offering startup options to control the frequency of removals, the max number of documents to be removed per removal operation, and even the max number of documents that can be removed per collection. In this video, we took a look at how to create a time to live index and how to create documents that take advantage of it. Time to live indexes are a built-in, simple, and convenient solution for managing documents that need eventual removal. Some key points to remember when using TTL indexes are, TTL indexes support single field attributes only. The TTL attribute must be a timestamp in seconds or a date string. You may only have one TTL index per collection. There is no time of removal guarantee it is dependent on when the removal operation occurs and should not be relied on for consistency. If the attribute specified in the TTL index is not in the document, the document will never be deleted. This allows for having documents that will and will not be deleted in the same collection. I hope you enjoyed this introduction video to the Time to Live Index feature coming with ArangoDB 3.5. And be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more content from ArangoDB.